Can everyone hear me like this? Okay. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة Alhamdulillah, Nahmadu, and Estainu, and Estalfiru, when I would be lahim in Shururi and Fusina, and Sayati Amadina. May Yahdi Hilla, Fala Mudulla, or my Yudlil, Fala Hadiella. A shadow and that Ila Hilla, Wahda Hula Shari Kella, was to Anna Mohammed and Abduh or Rasulu. Ya Yahladina Amen, who tapu law, Hakka to Kati, he were at a mutuna illa went to Muslimun, and Mabad. We start in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him. We seek his help. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and our own bad actions. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, the one having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his slave and final messenger. O you who believe have taqwa of Allah, fear him. Be conscious of him, be in awe of him in the way that he deserves, and do not die except in the state of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Yusuf, Ba'da'udhu billahi minash shaitanu rajeem, Nahnu naqussu alayka ahsan al-qasasi bima awhayna ilayka hadha al-Quran. Allah says, we narrate to you the best of stories from what has been revealed to you in this Quran. And then a few ayahs later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي يُوسُفَ وَإِخْوَتِهِ آيَاتٌ لِسَّائِلِينَ Allah says, certainly in Yusuf and his brothers, there are signs, there are ayahs for those who are asking. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes a, a story about Yusuf and his brothers, a story about a family as the best of stories. So what this tells us is that family is very important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so in today's khutbah, inshallah, we will focus on lessons related to family from the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. So the story of Yusuf begins with Yusuf as a young boy. 
One day he has this powerful dream where he sees 11 stars, the sun and the moon prostrating to him. And so the first person he goes to to share this dream is his father. And he goes and he says, Ya abati, O my father, I have seen this dream. His father responds by saying, Ya bunai, O my son, do not share this dream with your brothers because they might plan something against you. And pay attention to this now. He doesn't say your brothers are all jealous of you. They're horrible people. They're troublemakers. No, he attributes the evil to shaitan. He says, Inna shaitan insani adu wa mubin. That shaitan is a clear enemy to man. So he might try to whisper to them to do something against you. And then he continues and he advises and he mentors Yusuf. He says, thus your Lord will choose you and he will teach you the interpretation of dreams and he will complete his favor upon you and your brothers the same way he completed his favor upon your forefather, Ibrahim and Ishaq. And so from this conversation, we see that Yusuf and his father have a good quality relationship. And so I want to pause and focus on that for a second. Inshallah, with our families, we should seek to have good quality relationships like this. Yusuf, the way he speaks to his father and the way the father speaks to him, these titles they use, Ya Abati, Ya Bunay, Oh my son, Oh my father, it conveys a, a tone of love and respect for one another. Yusuf is comfortable with his father and pay, parents pay attention to this. He is comfortable to speak to his father about things that are important to him. The father has time for him. He can prioritize uh, spending time with Yusuf. And so we should seek to have that with our families, you know, whether it might be your spouses or your children or your parents, we should seek good quality relationships. And somebody might ask, well, you know, why? Why should I seek these good quality relationships? And the Prophet ﷺ, he told the companions that whoever seeks to increase his lifespan and his rizq, then let him uphold the ties of kinship. So the Prophet ﷺ, he, he told the companions that these things like family and, and you know, how you treat your family are directly connected to your, your, you know, how much money you're going to make, uh, if somebody is looking for a spouse, and so on and so forth. And so somebody, and, and you know, there's scientific studies today that show that people who have good relationship with family actually tend to have better physical and mental health. They tend to live longer. And it's, it's really, and they actually tend, you know, their lives just tend to be better. And it's interesting that the Prophet والسلام, he told the companions about this many, many years ago. So somebody, inshallah, is convinced now they want to have good quality relationship with family. So how do we go about doing that? And one way we can do that is by actually spending quality time with people and go and actually visit people. And, you know, sometimes when we go and we spend time with people, physically we are there, but mentally we are somewhere else. So, no, we should be there mentally as well. And we have so many distractions these days. We have our phones, we have electronics. So we might physically be one place and somewhere else. We're actually mentally somewhere else. The Prophet ﷺ didn't do this. When he would meet with somebody, he would turn his body in their direction. He would face them and he would give them his undivided attention. So now the story continues and we shift focus to Yusuf's brothers. And Yusuf's brothers are having a discussion. They're, they're upset about something. They feel like their father is giving all the love and attention to Yusuf. So they, they start to come up with a plan. They say, let's kill Yusuf, or maybe we can cast him out to a land far away. And then our father's love and attention will come to us. And then we can be good people after that. One of the kids says, hold on a second. That's a bit extreme. Let's not kill Yusuf. Instead, let's put him in a well. Somebody else will pick him up. And then our father's attention will come to us. So that's the plan they go forward with. So they approach their dad one day and they ask their dad, let us take Yusuf out to play. You know, he'll have a good time. We'll teach him some things. And Yaqub, the father of Yusuf, he was a prophet, by the way. He was very involved in the lives of his children. He was not an absent father. You know, he, he understood the dynamics. He understood that Yusuf's brothers were, you know, there was some jealousy there. So he was a little bit cautious and he expressed that to them carefully. Now pay attention to this. He doesn't say, oh, I don't trust you guys. You guys are a bunch of troublemakers. He says... No, I'm actually afraid that while you guys aren't paying attention, maybe a wolf might eat him. So, you know, he's, he's very sensitive to, to the feelings of his kids and he makes sure not to put them down. But this, the kids are persistent. They keep pushing back and eventually he caves and he lets them take Yusuf. So they take Yusuf and they put him in a well, they execute their plan. And then they have this entire scene planned out. They run back to their dad during the night and they're crying and they're like, oh, father, you would not believe what happened. We were playing, we were running, we were having a good time. And, you know, all of a sudden, just as you predicted, Yusuf got taken by a wolf and the wolf ate Yusuf. 
And they even grabbed a shirt of Yusuf's and they put fake blood on it. And they showed it to their father to give him proof that this actually happened. And so now I want you to put yourself in Yaqub alayhi salam's shoes. Somebody comes to you and tells you something terrible has happened to somebody you love. And you see this person and you think that they're lying to you and it's possible that they're involved. How do you react to such a situation? Many of us will get upset. We'll lose our cool. We might even go pretty crazy, right? Yaqub alayhi salam's response was no. I Rather your souls have enticed you to something. I don't believe you guys. And then he says, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ He says, in that case, I have no choice but to have beautiful patience and I seek help from Allah uh, from what you guys are describing. So now I want to pause for a second and focus on this. The fact of the matter is, our family will disappoint us. You know, we don't live in a perfect situation. You know, we're going to have our good times. Sometimes our family is going to disappoint us. And inshallah, it's not going to be anything this extreme. But we need to be prepared mentally that family will disappoint us. And we got to be able to be patient with them and be able to hold our composure. The Prophet ﷺ told the companions that the strong man is not the one who is physically strong, who is a good wrestler. Rather, the strong man is the one who controls themselves when they are angry or upset. In other words, true strength is mental strength, not so much physical strength. And, you know, I know especially like young brothers, we really focus on being strong physically. We work out. We hit the gym. You know, we, we diet, right? We do martial arts. All these things are, are physical strength improvers, right? And these are all great things. But at the same time, sometimes we neglect mental strength. So it's very important for us to be aware that situations like this might come up and we got to hold our composure and not get angry and not lose our cool. Another thing we take from this part of the story is the danger of jealousy. The Prophet ﷺ told the companions, beware of jealousy and envy because jealousy consumes good deeds the same way a fire consumes grass or wood. And so if you ever experience this feeling in your heart, don't let it settle. You need, we need to fight it, get rid of it. And actually, I encourage people, you know, myself, everybody who ever experiences anything like this, to actually make dua for that person that Allah puts barakah and puts blessings in whatever that is for that person. And if you think about it, jealousy, you don't benefit anything from experiencing that. But if you turn it into a positive, you make dua for that person, the Prophet ﷺ told the companions that whoever makes dua for their brother or sister in their absence, that the angels say, and may it be for you as well. So the angels actually make dua for you. So you can take this negative thing and turn it into a positive. And again, just really emphasizing this, you know, we saw Yusuf's brothers, jealousy and envy drove them to take their brother and put him in a well. So we need to be careful and again, just fight that feeling. And so now the story continues and I'm going to kind of go through this a little bit fast uh, for, for time's sake. So Yusuf is found in the well by some travelers. He is picked up and he is sold to somebody in Egypt. And keep in mind, Yusuf and his family originally they are from Palestine. He is sold to somebody in Egypt, a man whose title is Al-Aziz. He's a man who has a position of leadership. And so now he's away from his family. He grows up. He becomes a mature young man, an intelligent, handsome young man. And the woman who he's living in the house with is constantly trying to seduce him. So he has to deal with that. And through the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's able to be patient and he's able to resist the temptation. But eventually he is thrown into prison and he is accused and he is slandered. People invent rumors about him. And he remains in prison for many, many years. Eventually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, he, he proves his innocence. He is taken out of prison. He is released from prison and he is put in a position of leadership in Egypt. And one day while he is you know, going about his business, he was in charge of like the food and the supplies in Egypt. His brothers enter into the city and he recognizes them from all those years ago, but they don't recognize him because keep in mind, he's a grown man by this point. He looks like a totally different person. So now they're coming to him in a position of weakness. They need him. They need his food and the supplies and he's in a position of power. So I want you to put yourself in Yusuf's shoes for a second. These guys that just walked in, Everything difficult that I've gone through in my life goes back to the point where these guys put him in the well, right? Here's his chance. It's payback time. You have power now, and these guys are in a position of weakness. What does he do with the power? He reveals his identity to them, and he tells them, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم. He tells them that there is no blame upon you guys today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. وهو أرحم الراحمين that he is the most merciful of those who are merciful. And, you know, when somebody wrongs us, sometimes it's difficult for us, right? It's difficult for us to just forgive somebody. 
Some of us will hold grudges. Some of us will take it a step further and we will boycott people. We'll cut people off from our lives. And I just want to caution all of us to be careful of this. This is something that is not a small matter. The Prophet ﷺ, he told the companions, whoever cuts off the ties of kinship will not enter paradise. I'm going to repeat that. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever cuts off family ties will not enter paradise. And I know it sounds severe, right? But keep in mind, we talked about how important family is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reward that we get for being good to family. Similarly, if we cut people off, that is something that is great to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will go, that will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now keep in mind, there are circumstances where there's an exception, right? If somebody is, you know, experiencing abuse, somebody's putting somebody in danger, then yeah, those are reasonable exceptions to this rule. But we shouldn't just cut people off for small, petty things, right? And I've heard of so many people that maybe somebody said something, you know, that bothered them, and now they haven't spoken to this person for many, many years. And if it's something that you can get over, something that you can, you know, um, squash, then we should take that step, inshallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran something to the effect of, let them forgive and pardon because don't they want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive and pardon them? So the same way we want Allah's mercy, we should be merciful towards other people. So now we go back to the story and Yusuf and his brothers have been reunited. And so now we shift focus back to Palestine where the father Yaqub is. And now he's an old man and he's gone through so many years of hardship and suffering and sadness. And he longs for the day that he will be reunited with his son Yusuf And all those nights crying and now he has lost his eyesight. He has become blind. And so when Yusuf finds this out immediately, his focus shifts to his dad. How can I bring relief to my dad? How can I make things easy? on my dad because he was a good son. And so he tells his brother, take my shirt and cast it over Yusuf's face and his eyesight will be restored. And sure enough, through a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the father's eyesight is restored. And it's really interesting if you think about it. At the beginning of the story, we talked about the shirt with the fake blood on it. Yusuf's brothers used this object and they presented it to their father and that gave their father so much difficulty and hardship and sadness. Yusuf takes the same object and he uses it to bring relief, happiness, and joy to his dad. So brothers and sisters, I ask you, are we the type of people that bring sadness and difficulty to our parents? Or do we bring relief and happiness? Inshallah, we are from the second category. And now I really just want to emphasize the importance of treating our parents with excellence in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah says that he decreed that you worship nobody except him and with your parents, excellent treatment. Allah puts in the same breath as Tawheed, the idea of only worshiping one God, he puts that in the same sentence as treating your parents with excellence. That shows you how important it is to treat your parents right when it comes to, you know, in, in Islam. If one of them or both of them reach old age, don't even say uff to them. Uf is like a sigh. It's like something very small, like, ah, uh, like don't even do that to them, right? How many of us go well beyond that? How many of us yell at our parents? We say things that hurt them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, kama rabbayani salira. He tells us to make this dua, oh Allah, have mercy on my parents the same way they raised me when I was little. And this is a dua that we should learn and we should make, but we should also reflect on it. If we, every one of us thinks about it when we were little, when we were babies, right? We were so helpless. We couldn't even get food by ourselves. We couldn't go to the bathroom properly. We couldn't even sleep without the help of our parents. And our parents had so much mercy on us. No matter how much we were crying, no matter how difficult we were, they were merciful towards us. So this is a reminder from Allah that you should return that favor. You should make that dua to have mercy on them, but you should also be merciful to them and return that favor to them, inshallah. Inshallah, in the second part of the khutbah, we will recap some of these lessons and we will conclude the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ونوانا so just to recap, we talked about how Yusuf and his father had a good quality relationship and they spent quality time with one another. Inshallah, let's take that as a lesson. And this weekend, maybe there's a family member of ours who we've been neglect neglecting and we haven't been spending time with them.
let's make it a point to schedule something. Let's go out and spend some time with them. And when we're there, let's make sure not only are we physically there, but we are mentally there. We talked about how Yusuf's brothers, you know, they came to their father and they upset him, but he did not lose his composure. He stayed patient with them. And we all have that, you know, we might, we might all have a, a family member who can be difficult for us, but we're going to be, you know, we're going to treat it as a test and we're going to be patient and we're going to keep our composure. We also talked about how Yusuf's brothers, um, what was that third part? We talked about Yusuf's brothers when he was reunited with them. All the, all the things they put him through, all the difficulty, all the wrong, and he forgave them just like that. So some of us might have a relative who we haven't spoken to in a long time over some issue between us. Let's make it a point, inshallah, this weekend, if it's something that we can reconcile over, that we will reach out. We will take the high road, and inshallah, we'll get lots of edged for that, that we're going to make amends with that person. And finally, we talked about excellent treatment of parents. Let's make it a point, inshallah, if our parents are around, to do something very nice for them this weekend, inshallah. Maybe we take them out for some coffee. Maybe we buy them some flowers, whatever it might be. And if our parents are not around, then we make sure to make tons and tons of dua for them, inshallah. The story of Yusuf concludes his family, his parents, find out about him that he's still alive and well and that he's in Egypt and he has this position of leadership. So they now go all as a family one to go visit Yusuf. And they enter into his chamber and they see him after all these years, and all of them fall into prostration. And this is not a prostration of worship, obviously. It's a prostration of respect from previous ummas. So they prostrate, and Yusuf recognizes in this moment that this is the dream that I had so many years ago as a kid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has caused it to come true. And really, this is a beautiful end to a beautiful story. And one thing we can take from this is, no matter how much conflict happened in the family of Yusuf, how much difficulty his brothers put him through, at the end of the day, the family was reunited and they were together and they were on good terms. So inshallah for us, you know, we should take this as a lesson that we should seek to unite our families. You know, they say family is the cornerstone of society. And if you think about it, you know, as an ummah, you know, we have our struggles. We have our fair share of problems, right? And our ummah is not united, right? And if we really want to unite the ummah, then it starts with the family. If we can't reunite our families, how are we going to unite the entire ummah, right? So we need to really focus on our families and build these quality relationships and make sure we are together and, you know, stick it out with each other through thick and thin, through the ups and downs, inshallah. Finally, I'll just conclude with one thought. Um, you know, there's so many beautiful stories in the Quran. I encourage all of us to make sure we have a good, close, intimate relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we spend time, even if it's five minutes a day, there's so many things we can benefit from and so much wisdom we can take from that, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite our families and bring us all close together and to help us have good quality relationships. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. O Allah, I ask you for the best in this life, the best in the next life, and for protection from the punishment of the fire. Allah mahdina wa hadibina wa ja'alna sababa liman ihtada. O Allah, I ask you to guide us and to guide others through us. Allahumma ansur ikhwan al musadafina fi kulli makan. Oh Allah, I ask you to give victory to our brothers and sisters who are struggling throughout the world. Allah mashfi mardana, warham mautana, wakhtim bisarihati amayna. Oh Allah, if any of us are sick, we ask you to give them healing and we ask you to have mercy on those of us who have passed away. Wa akhir wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, akhir wa dawan, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, akhir wa sallam. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Straighten the lines, fill in the gaps, shoulder to shoulder. Allahu Akbar.
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirata Al-Mustaqim Sirata Al-Lazina An'amta Alayhim Ghayri Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Wanad-Dalim ألف لام تلك آيات الكتاب المبين إنا أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيدونك كيدا إن الشيطان للإنسان عدو مبين وكذلك يجتبيك ربك ويعلمك من تأويل الأحاديث ويتم نعمته عليك وعلى آل يعقوب كما أتمها على أبويك من قبل إبراهيم وإسحاق إن ربك عليم حكيم لقد كان في يوسف وإخوته آيات النساء Allah wa kum. Sami'a Allah liman hamida. Allah wa kum. Allah wa kum. Allah wa kum. Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Lazina An'amta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Maghub Alayhim Walad-Dahar فلما ذهبوا به واجمعوا أن يجعلوه في غيابة الجب وأوحينا إليه لتنبئنهم بأمرهم هذا وهم لا يشعرون وجاءوا آباؤهم عشاء يبكون قالوا يا أبانا إنا ذهبنا نستبق وتركنا يوسف وتركنا يوسف عند متاعنا فأكله الذئب وما أنت بمؤمن لنا ولو كنا صادقين وجاءوا على قميصه بدم كذب قال بل سولت لكم أنفسكم أمرا فصبر جميل فصبر جميل والله مستعان على ما تصفون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.